let us pray. Take my lips and let them be filled with messages from thee. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be found acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. What comes out? Then Jesus called the crowd again and said, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. Nothing outside of a person can enter and contaminate a person in God's sight. Rather, the things that come out of a person contaminate the person. Mark 7 verse 15. James M. Freeman, in his book, Manners and Customs of the Bible, describes the Pharisees as a political-religious party among the Jews. Freeman goes on to write, and I'm quoting, a Pharisee is literally one who is separated. And it is thought that the name was given because these people separated themselves from all Levitical impurity. They were doubtless a pure people in the beginning, their design being to preserve the law from violation and the Jewish people from contamination. Freeman adds, the great error of the most of them is consisted in substituting human tradition for divine law and in observing more external forms, many of them of a most wearisome as well as puerile or trivial character, instead of seeking for inward purity of heart, which would have been accompanied by, by corresponding blamelessness in life. End of quotation. One thing becomes evident when reading through the New Testament. It is that the Pharisees constantly found themselves in opposition to Jesus. They often raised controversial topics and were critical of Jesus who responded with stinging rebuke at their hypocrisy and failure to grasp what is important, what really matters, and what leads to true righteousness. Today's passage illustrates the kind of situation which sparked controversy between the Pharisees and Jesus. The Pharisees and the legal experts or the teachers of the law, individuals who devoted themselves to the study, the teaching of the Mosaic law, observed that Jesus' disciples were eating food before washing their hands in the way prescribed by the Pharisees or by the ancestors. Why are your disciples not living according to the rules handed down by the elders, but instead eat food with ritually unclean hands? Was the question that the Pharisees and the, and the teachers of the law raised. This question led Jesus to point out to the Pharisees and the teachers of the law that they 
must not be so concerned only about external practices and ceremonial and rituals, but that they should also be concerned about what is within and what is reflected in the attitudes and actions of individuals. In other words, Jesus was telling them that they were placing the emphasis in the wrong places, on the wrong things, while neglecting what was significant, what really mattered. So in the words of our text today, nothing outside a person can enter and contaminate, and some translations use the word defile a person in God's sight. Rather the things that come out of a person, those are the things that contaminate or defile the person. Now, it might help us to appreciate the situation a little more by mentioning that in their desire to ensure ritual purity, the Pharisees had developed a system of rules and regulations that made religious observance complex, onerous, wearisome, burdensome. For example, as you heard in the passage, there were rules about hand washing. And friends, this was no simple washing of the hands that you and I might do when, before we sit to take a meal. Um, to refer once again to Freeman's book on biblical customs. In that book, in a section of that book, the author refers to another author's extract from rabbinical writers that show how diligent the Pharisees were about their practice of hand washing. Something is said about the amount of water that had to be used, of the washing of hands, and the plunging of them, of the first and second water, of the manner of washing, of the time, of the order, when the number of those that sat down to meet exceeded five, or did not exceed, and other such niceties. In fact, there's a story told about a Jew who was in prison and who used up his daily ration of water just washing his hands and didn't have any left to quench his thirst. And so Freeman goes on to say, not content with the ordinary usage of washing after eating, they carefully wash before eating lest they be injured by Shipta, who was an evil spirit which sits upon men's hands in the night. And if any touch his food with unwashen hands, that spirit sits upon that food and there is danger from it. So with this insight, my sisters and brothers, we can see why the Pharisees and legal experts would be interested in knowing from Jesus why, as a rabbi, as one who knew or should have known the traditions, allowed his disciples not to observe these practices. And like on so many occasions, Jesus turns this into a teachable moment. Clean hands 
or a clean heart? That is the question. Jesus challenges those who were questioning him to be as equally concerned and interested in having a clean heart as they were in having hands that were ritually cleansed, that were cleansed in the manner prescribed by human rules. Since ultimately, my sisters and brothers, it is the state of the heart that matters. It is the condition of our heart that is important. Because it is from the heart that all actions spring, whether good or evil. So it is not what goes into a person that contaminates or defiles, but what comes out. Of course, my sisters and brothers, I can issue a warning to those of you present, to those who are listening, that yes, we should be careful about the literature that we consume, that we read, that we should be, we should avoid um, certain types of, of, of literature, that we should be careful about the places that, some of the places that we might go, yes. And, and that is not to say that when we sit to have our meal that we should not cleanse our hands before. But the point that Jesus is making is that it is not really what goes inside of us, inside a person, in the sight of God, that will defame or defile a person or contaminate a person. But it is what comes out. Having a clean heart, a heart cleansed from the filth of sin and pride matters more in the sight of God than having clean hands. And so the songwriter says, wash my heart, wash my hands, cause I want to worship you, I want to worship you. Here we are, here I stand, so make me new, make me new, make me new. Yes, our prayer should be like the prayer of David after he sinned with Bathsheba. When he says in Psalm 51, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Yes, we should pray that God would cleanse our total being. That God will wash us and cleanse our hearts and make us new. And finally, my sisters and brothers, right rituals or righteousness? That is the other question. As we have seen, the washing of hands in the manner of the Pharisees was not simply for um, reasons of hygiene, but also they had some superstition attached to it. To, to, it had some superstition attached to it. That it had something to do with the warding off of some spirit that would rest on the hands at night. And if you touch your food without washing in a particular way, then that spirit would fail you. Again, Jesus used the occasion to challenge the Pharisees and the legal experts who had questioned him to see beyond the outward practice and superstition to the deeper meaning of having the spirit of the living God in them which would be expressed in works of righteousness since it is what comes out of a person that contaminates the person in God's sight rather than what goes in. We can get all the rituals right. 
We can get all the practices right, the outward trappings of religion. But my sisters and brothers, it is really the stuff that comes out of us, out of our heart, that really matters. So it's what is inside that comes out in our speech or our rhetoric and our conduct that has the contaminating effect that will help or harm our community and our actions with others. So let us be guided by the teaching of Jesus in today's reading. Let us be careful, my friends, not only about what goes in, but also, and very importantly, what comes out in the way we act, in what we say, in the words we utter, and the actions we perform. And I would say, take care what you post on Facebook, Twitter, or other social media, because that is what comes out. That is what can defile, debase, or defame you according to the content that is published. Set a watch on the things you say because your words can stick and rankle. Those words can have a contaminating effect on others, on your relationships, depending on what they are. Keep in mind, my sisters and brothers, that it is what comes from inside, what comes out that matters. So do your best to cultivate a clean heart so that what springs from it is good and righteous, inspiring, uplifting, edifying, encouraging, always bringing glory to God. May God create in us new and clean heart, a new and clean heart, and may our heart be the throne of God so that all that we do and all that we say will reflect God's praise and God's goodness. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.